We'll talk about a crash bro, better yet, a crash sister, who has gone from being negative on housing to actually turning positive. So we will talk about that. We've got the latest and greatest real estate data from Altos Research. We have consumer confidence and a couple of earnings. First, let's talk about somebody that I have blocked historically. As you know, I take great care in blocking people on my feed that are just simply negative, creating doom and fear and nothing else. Occasionally, I get sent um, comments and stuff from folks I trust. And lo and behold, somebody that I blocked six months ago, maybe nine months ago, Amy Nixon, Amy Nixon, AKA Texas runner. Uh, she has a rather large Twitter following, I think at over 50,000. And she was very negative on housing without a lot of historical context, in my opinion. She has now flipped. She is no longer negative. In fact, uh, Amy Nixon has put out some great information about the 1980s. She has talked about the fact that, yes, Texas and Florida may be in trouble, but other states are doing well. So I have unblocked a crash bro, AKA crash sister. I think Amy Nixon uh, has always been very intelligent in her writings. I think she was a trained journalist, although I don't know that for sure. Uh, but again, um, if you had blocked Amy Nixon on Twitter or X because of my suggestions, I just wanted you to know that I actually unblocked her uh, yesterday. She's done a great uh, service highlighting the 1980s. And of course, you and I, this is no surprise because why? We've been talking about these things for two years. But I will gladly accept more voices preaching into this void of doom that, you know what? We have been here before. It's hard. It's not going to be this crazy cataclysmic crash that these doom uh, creators are talking about. So, hey, do me a favor. Go check out Amy Nixon, a.k.a. Texas Runner on X or Twitter. See if she's uh, putting out good stuff in your opinion and give her a follow. All righty, folks, let's talk about Arthur Burns and Paul Volcker. Now, we've had this conversation ever since Paul um, Jerome Powell, God, when was that, 18 months ago, where he was at Jackson Hole. If you remember the Jackson Hole meeting, he basically walked up to Wall Street and kicked him in the nuts and basically said, we're going higher and, um, you know, get on board. That was the first time I said, hey, is he trying to be Paul Volcker and avoid becoming Arthur Burns? Well, tomorrow, in my opinion, we find out if Jerome Powell is Arthur Burns or Paul Volcker. How will we know? If the press conference is dovish in any way, he will be Arthur Burns. And if you guys don't know who Arthur Burns was, he was the Fed president before Paul Volcker. He was the Fed president from 1970 to 1978. If you go back and look at my 54-year spreadsheet, which includes these years, you will see that those years, for all intents and purposes, sucked. Why was that? Well, Arthur Burns was, I guess, too, too, too loose with rate hikes and rate cuts. He didn't let it stick to break inflation. Arthur Burns is known as the great inflation. He created, he created a decade, a decade of inflation. And it wasn't until Paul Volcker finally ripped the Band-Aid off and said, hey, we're going higher, you know, recession be damned, which we got a nasty recession, but we also beat back inflation. Tomorrow, I believe Jerome Powell has to be hawkish. He has to talk about the potential for rate hikes. He has to talk about potentially no rate cuts this year. Now, again, I don't think he has to raise rates, but darn it, they have to have the threat. The market has to feel like rates may go higher. And tomorrow is that day. If Jerome Powell comes out and is dovish like he was the last meeting, 
But again, tomorrow is the day. Arthur Burns or Paul Volcker. It's a big day. It is a big day. So let's talk about some housing data. Altos Research, Mike Simonson uh, always does some great stuff. These are the stats that I got for the week. Inventory is up 2.4% week on week. Uh, it is up 32% year on year. And folks, it is up 90% from 2022. Inventory is growing. In fact, uh, new inventory grew by 93,000 last week. That is up 4.7% week on week. More than any week last year, it was a big week. Uh, Texas and Florida, folks, if you're not paying attention to Texas and Florida, uh, we need to. 29%, 29, 29, call it 30. 30% 30 of the homes that were listed were either in Texas or Florida. Folks, buy box, know your market, all those things. And again, Texas and Florida, three out of 10 homes that were listed last week were in one of those two states. If, if I was shopping in one of those two states, that would be time to uh, get aggressive and write disrespectful offers. And interestingly, we had 398,000 homes pending, so we still are seeing deals done. In, in fact, 76,000, 76,000 new contracts. So again, 93,000 new listings, 76,000 new contracts. That too, was bigger than any week in 2023. Think about that. We had more listings than any week in 2023, and we had more pendings in any week in 2023. This, this housing market is still working. It is still transacting. Uh, prices, $399,900, just $100,000 away from $400. That is up 5% for the year. And price cuts. Price cuts had a noticeable jump. I'm going to guess a lot of this was Texas and Florida. Price cuts up to 32.5%. Always remember, the historical average per price cuts is 33.1. 33.1. So while we are up, we are not yet at the average, historical average, but we could be there soon. Folks, why am I so adamant that tomorrow is an important day? We got another inflation reading today that a lot of people missed. It's called the Employment Cost Index. What is it? It's essentially an index focused on labor and labor only. Think wages. Why is this important? Because we are a service-based economy. 65, 68% of our economy is services. And wages are the largest component of services. So if you have an employment index or an employment cost index that is accelerating, that's not good. That is inflationary. That is the wage spiral, rage, blah, blah, blah. That is the spiral in wages that we don't want. That is the, oh my gosh, inflation is sticky. It's entrenched. We are going higher because if, if wages are going up, the services will have to be raised uh, going forward. So we need to watch that. It did jump 1.2% up from 1% uh, from last time and above expectations of 1%. It is an underlying inflation that the Fed will absolutely look at. Again, the Fed meeting started today, Fed decision tomorrow. Think about all the inflation readings we have had the last three months. 80%, maybe 75%, we're all on the wrong side. Inflation is entrenched. And if Powell comes down and is dovish, I don't know what to tell you. We could have Arthur Burns 2.0. But again, he can get in front of the microphone. He can threaten rate hikes. He can say no cuts in 24, and maybe that will be enough to get the market moving. How about some earnings? We got both McDonald's and Coca-Cola. McDonald's hit, uh, hit revenue, think top line, missed on earnings, uh, and same store sales fell short of expectations. Coca-Cola beat top line, beat bottom line, which meant revenue and earnings, and actually raised guidance. Case Schiller, Case Schiller came out, was uh, a good number. Case Schiller came out 6.4%, Case Schiller Home Price Index. Again, remember, as we've talked about all the time with Case Schiller, it's really a lagging indicator. This is February data. February is, seems like a year ago, given that we are just entering May. February rates were lower. You, you know the deal if you watch this channel, but still, uh, home price is up 6.4%. Uh, San Diego, San Diego up 11.4, 
and Chicago and Detroit tied for last place at 8.9. This is in the Case-Shiller 20 metro area. Uh, other things to talk about is consumer confidence. Again, consumer confidence, I'm gonna rattle off some numbers. These numbers should mean nothing to you. Watch the trend, and was it above or below expectation? So what happened? Consumer confidence, last, was 103. Expectations were 104. So again, it was expected that the consumer was feeling better. That's what that says. What happened? 97. 97. Huge miss. Not only are we not more confident, we are significantly less confident and we broke below 100. This is not good. This is the consumer telling you that they are getting tired of inflation. They are getting tired of higher rates. This, the consumer can create a recession all by itself. Are we having a rolling recession, a soft landing, stagflation? All of that is yet to be determined. Again, Fed day tomorrow is important. And then finally, I got an interesting tidbit about millennials. Millennials wealth grew 49% in four years. From 2019 to 2023, millennials, the much maligned millennials wealth grew 49%. How can that be? Folks, the wealth formula hasn't changed in hundreds of years. <coughs> Excuse me. In hundreds of years, wealth is built by owning assets, property, stocks, businesses, whatever that is for you. You don't get rich renting everything. You have to own stuff. And again, I know there is a lot of, I don't know, hate and fear and nonsense between the generations. Let that go. Let that go. We're all in this the same way. We all get, we all grow wealth the same way. Folks, I want you to have an amazing day. Like, subscribe, comment, become part of the One Rental at a Time community. Tell your friends, have an amazing day. And don't forget, go check out Amy Nixon, a crash bro changed. I didn't know it was possible. It actually happened. And uh, I was thrilled to find that. So folks, have a great day. Take care. Later.